starting the new week, okay? And uh, one of the, so maybe we can rec start recording. So I, I just started. Yes. Sam, have you started recording? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. So, <clears throat> So last time I started to explain what uh, is the program of uh, four dimensional mirror symmetry. What's the program of four dimensional mirror symmetry? So I explained the model of the type A, and it is Donaldson Witten, so called Donaldson Witten. theory. And here I put that it is old, but standard. So it is old for many reasons. Let me try to tell you why I call this old. Okay. It's, it's a bit hard I to see. This old. It's a bit hard to see on the board. It's it's um, liquid. Really? How, yeah. how this could happen? I don't know. As... You see, I had some special illumination. No. Okay, so... Uh, so uh, uh. What about this? Uh, approximately the same, but... Ah, I'm sorry. It's not the blinks. It's I have not put the proper camera on. Mm -hmm. and, and quality should not be good. Yes. So I hope my pens are on me, you see? I'm an absent-minded professor, as professor should be. Okay. Now it should be better. Yeah, yeah, very good. Really? Oh, now you disappeared. Of course, I, 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 am restarting the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so here you see oh. Donaldson and Witten theory old. And now it's come. Now it's unfocused. Ah, it's because it's. it's still unfocused. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Hmm. Okay, we will we will fix it. I see that it's unfocused. Is it focused now? Yes, for the moment. Okay. So, okay, I call this old, and now I'll explain why I call this old because it is uncompleted in many ways, okay? So first way place where it's uncompleted is because it is not using oh, not using configuration space. And we know that inclusion of configuration space and actually later on moduli space was the crucial to understand the proper a, the proper a model for the theory of holomorphic maps. So it's reason A. I'll give you many reasons, okay? Reason B is the following. <coughs> Observables. A 
about observables, I need to say the following. In original formulation, you do the following. You start the second chain class of the universal bundle. Okay, but actually, we need to study any invariant of the adjoint of the group G. So, uh, Andy, so it's, it's, it's cut off. It's, it's cut off what you're writing. Cut off, it's easier. Uh -huh. We are not afraid of cut off. <laughs> but <laughs> but G, okay. G is not visible now. So, in, so in Vaj is visible and G, yes, okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so in particular, so uh, for SUN, for UN, SU, for UN, you may consider the following objects. Trace of phi to the power n. And you call this OM. I put it here, M, OM. And then from this OM, you can make the sentence. And it means that there should be infinitely many times. Tm x4. Infinitely many times. And uh, so, sorry, by descendants, by descendants, you don't mean including G's. By the by descendants, I mean Wheaton's descend Wheaton's descendants. But I, don't, I mean I don't. that we take this, and we take the fourth of the the fourth the four form to integrate our x form. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see here I am not saying that we need to study gravitational descendants. I anticipate this, but you are right. So, so this is a huge space of observables. Point C gravitational descendants in sorry, Lothar style. So if, if I will not uh, stress it, nobody would stress it. So I have to stress my name. I'm sorry. I know it's un unpolite, but uh, so it means that uh, we should have uh, the action of, so we have a point and the tangent to, to this plane, tangent to a point is c square and uh, we definitely have a tangent bundle and we also have characteristic classes of such tangent bundle so if we if it happens that c square is decomposed into c plus c then uh, we have two line bundles and we have two first chain classes. And these two first chain classes approximately correspond to Nikrasov parameters, epsilon one and epsilon two. Okay, nothing is done in this direction. Point D, quantum. So previously we had quantum cohomology, you know. But now we 
cancel cohomology, quantum invariant theory. Because observables are invariants. So we may consider O invariant one at point X, O invariant two at point Y, under correlated. And you might look what happens when X going to Y. And actually here, there will be quantum multiplication. Invariant one times invariant two, classical product. Because you know, uh, you can take a product of invariants, right? Plus two types of corrections plus instantonic corrections. Because uh, what we have ordinary cohomology will have this formula. We have this formula in two dimensions. So quantum cohomology start with ring, start with ordinary plus instanton corrections. So here we have, should have this, but it's not the only correction. It's interesting that there should be also gravitational correction. So gravitational corrections mean that you should consider this thing not in cohomology, but in equivalent cohomology. with respect to rotations as the meeting point. And you know, there was a, there was a Fields medalist called Okunkov who studied it in dimension two. So after Okunkov studied this phenomena in dimension two, we have a good motivation to study it in dimension four, you know? So all this thing, it was not done because Donaldson was satisfied by considering case trace phi square. It's too simple. Okay. Now, there is another issue here. And this other issue is somehow stu studied in the Nikrasov's work and uh, in works of Zyberg and Witten. It is called matter. And I, of course I put it in the, like this. So what matter means? Matter means that if you have the instant on modular space. You have two ways to get differential forms here. Alpha is Donaldson observables. And there is a point B. B means <coughs> that you can have representation of the corresponding connection, okay? And uh, if you have a representation of the corresponding connection, you have, of course, it's good that we have no physicists in the audience. <laughs> it's, so it is easy to explain. We, we, we should have with any representation, we have associated Vector bundle. All right. So you see this modular space come together with the associated vector bundles. And if we have associated vector bundles, we know what to do. We can take what Pasha characteristic classes.
And these are definitely new observables, right? So what do, does this representation stand for in physics, okay? Of course, they stand for a matter that you have. And uh, and when you study these characteristic classes, you actually study, if you do it this way, you study perturbatively the Higgs phenomena. Actually. So all this has to be studied. And uh, as we will see later on, we have such thing in dimension two. And in dimension two, it is called in mathematics, Brill-Newton pairs. Have you heard about Brill-Newton Newton pairs? Uh, back to characteristic so, classes. Can, 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 you, can you write down some formula or I'm kind of a bit lost? What, what, what you see, uh, I, I would not like, I would prefer to postpone it. I just, okay. so here I am just showing you this idea for the first time, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I'll explain it in two dimensional theory. Mm -hmm. And then we will come back to this in the four dimensional theory. But as, a, as an idea, just to say, it's clear. If you have a, if you have a universal bundle, mm -hmm. and if you have a representation, you can definitely get uh, this, right? Okay, so all this is a four-dimensional generalization of the issue of Brillinotter pairs. So Brillinotter pairs is definitely the following thing. It's uh, it's a space of uh, of bundles in dimension two. All of them are holomorphic. There is no abstraction. But then you can study holomorphic sections of some bundle. And this is called the matter. And the theory that studies this is uh, called uh, gauged linear sigma model. So we need to understand all this Donaldson theory as a theory without matter. And of course, Matter could be included in this way, and uh, in the works of Nikrasov, you may see the inclusion of matter. He computed it, and of course, it appeared in our early works with him, but he computed it properly. Okay? So you see how many things are missing here. Okay? And, and let me give you another idea. So, so these are pieces that are missing in the donaldson witten theory, okay? But what is interesting, I want to make a strong statement, okay? I'm a bit afraid of making this strong statement, but I have to do it. The donaldson witten theory itself is not a universal A model. Okay, it is so strong that I have to write it down. Even modified is not the universal. Let me comment, okay? So if this is not the universal, okay? 
you may ask me, ah, what is the universal, right, Pasha? Saying that something is not is not constructive. You need to say what is the universal. And of course, the universal is gauged sigma model. So let me explain you what happens in dimension two. We have the following theories. We have nonlinear sigma model. And we call this Grom of Witten. We also have two dimensional super young males, sorry, young males. And both two are embedded. So this is a particular case. And this is a particular case of so-called gauged sigma module. And here there is an intermediate piece. So here is also gauged. linear sigma model. So this is kind of set of inclusions. So two-dimensional young males, it's a theory where you have uh, the Lie algebra with the inverse parity as a target. Then you can add matter, linear matter, and uh, have gauged linear sigma model. But then you can, you can say that uh, you may have some interaction more matter fields, and then you have a gauge sigma model. Here is another thing that is nonlinear sigma model, and also there is a relation between these two. So gauge linear sigma model may be considered as a model for some sp specific nonlinear sigma model. So actually, this is the universal A model. In dimension equals to two. So as you as you may guess, in dimension equal to four. We should have the same guys, but maybe a bit more complicated. Okay? So we need to know what is the analog of what. And Edward Witten, of course, knows that the analog of two dimensional young males is this Donaldson theory. When I mentioned uh, these uh, line bundles, this is the analog of gauged linear sigma model. Actually, these two models, even this model, is, al is already studied. in so-called zyberg witten theory. I mean these two pieces. They are studied to some extent. OK? But there are other things. First is nonlinear sigma model and also gauged sigma model. So nonlinear sigma model is a theory of That, that I was advocating. It's a theory of holomorphic maps 
from complex manifold to complex manifold from for d c equals to two complex manifold to camp to complex manifold And of course, there should be a general theory. By the way, Pasha, when we studied this theory together, it is something, it, it is a place where we were moving to, but we have not completed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we understood this two dimensional Young Mills theory as a topological, as a conformal topological theory. Okay, studied its properties. So this is the full picture. And understanding of different pieces here is important to understand D equals four uh, mirror. Okay, it took people how many years? So still the final formula is not proved. I mean the formula for the mirror to gauge sigma model. And that's exactly partially in the papers that you have sent me. Okay? Mm -hmm. People are still working, trying to work out the universal mirror formula. Okay? So they are looking for the B model here. And uh, it took like 30 years, at least, 30 plus years to understand this picture in two-dimensional case. So, so one uh, expect to have a four-dimensional or two-dimensional complex holomorphic maps to reproduce the uh, dominance of written anywhere. Not to reproduce, to have a parallel theory. Okay. It is not, it's not to reproduce. It's because, uh, you see, if you have nonlinear sigma model and two-dimensional Young Mills, they are very different. People constructed them from different reasons. You, people even thought that this theory is called the Schwartz type theory, and this theory is called Witten type theory. But they are unified in the concept of gauge sigma model. Oh, that's so why. Um, yes. So one should uh, use the holomorphic maps, all dimensional map, to define uh, smooth uh, environment for four dimensional manifold. You see, you, you, uh, you see, if you have holomorphic here, okay, so immediately we have some puzzles because, uh, because I don't know how to define this theory. I don't know how to define this theory on the smooth manifolds. But the fact that I don't know okay. uh, yes. on, the smooth, on the smooth target. Yes. Come so I don't know. Mm. But the fact that I don't know does not mean does not mean that it's undoable. Mm. So it is so it is kind of an open problem. However, it's not that uh, how to say it's not that important because uh, now it's not. Uh, you see, we are doing it. So the goal is not to classify four-dimensional manifolds. It was just uh, an entrance point, entrance in the full world of four dimensional theories. Like you see, if you want to classify Riemann surfaces, complex dimension one, you may stop when you, when you find that uh, the genus is the only invariant. But you should not stop research. 
because we construct all algebraic ge geometry machinery already. And here, you should go on and on in the study of Riemann surfaces. Similarly here, in dimension four, after you are getting uh, Donaldson invariants and uh, you get, and you have some uh, answers to some problems about smooth structures, you should not stop. You see, because you open uh, a very wide uh, toolbox, you, disco you discovered so many phenomena that you need to continue studying this phenomena. Okay. By the way, as always, we need to have a time policeman, right, Pasha? So uh, I will speak for uh, seven more. I will speak for seven more minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we will, or ten more minutes, and then we will have the natural break. Okay, so it is this uh, world that we are interested in. And I, I just want to remind you that this world is the so-called A model. Okay, now let me tell you what can we do in the case of B model. So B model, what is B model? It's very interesting thing. What is this object Y? Hey, Andy, so, so Andy, so when you are raising 2D and Mills on the board, so you didn't really mean that sort of answers depend on the area. You, 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 of course, you, of course, thank you. I was lazy to say with the zero coupling constant. It's not because I don't know it. It's because I'm lazy to write it. Or you mean that, that you would like to enrich it with like, uh, with Casimir's, with observables like, or- of course, I, of, course, I, of, course, of course, I would like to put Casimir's, but, but I'd like to put Casimir's as a two observable, mm -hmm. not as a zero observable. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, so the, the issue is what is B model? And uh, I told you that there is a candidate as a B model. So it is algebraic integrable system. So let me, pu let me put it as a question. And now let me try to explain why I am not 100% sure that it is an answer. Okay, and I'll give an argument why why I think so. Okay, because I know this picture, and I remember what is the origin of Zyber Quinton theory. It is integrating out. Passive modes so where do we have it here we actually have it here in this place when we stayed when we study gauged linear sigma model we also have this phenomenon integrating out massive modes so it is interesting to see how in the gauge linear sigma model, we have a baby version of the algebraic integrable system. And uh, I hope that uh, I will be able to explain it to you tomorrow, okay? However, this gauge linear sigma model is not the only thing that we have because we also have nonlinear sigma model. And, this, and since we have nonlinear sigma model, 
the structures of the gauge linear sigma model may be absent here. When I said this correspondence, I just want to say that sometimes there is a relation. But sometimes there is no relation. In particular, non-linear sigma model may have, have nothing to do with anything gauge. Okay? So without having, without being gauged, you may ask, what should we expect here? So, so algebraic integrable system. So, uh, okay, it's it's very important, you see, because in any problem, it's important to see what is an answer. So, this algebraic integrable systems. Okay, I'll clean out everything. seem to be a mirror only of this piece, like gauged linear sigma model. And if we look what would happen for a nonlinear sigma model, I would say, sorry guys, I don't know. I don't know what Y is. You see, sometimes there is a relation and I can check myself. But what is Y is for nonlinear sigma models, I don't know. You see, in this puzzle, when you start to put pieces together, you inevitably lead, you, you, never, you are inevitably led to inclusion more general system. So this, once again, this integrable is related to this gauge. However, there is no linear. What is Y in general? I would say, I do not know. It's equation. So first you need to convince yourself that there are nonlinear sigma models in four dimensional context, okay? And then ask equation what Y is. So I see a lot of open questions and uh, open possibilities. Okay. So so now it is even a question about why. But then we'll have a question. Okay, just imagine that we have why. We still need the. Uh, to describe a theory of a special coordinates on the space of deformation of Y, okay? And uh, th that's what I would like to explain after the, after the break, okay? Because now it's a proper time for me to make a break and uh, it will be a five minutes break. Okay, Pasha, please, as a policeman, call me, whistle me out. Okay. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. So I, I may answer uh, short questions. Okay. So what I was doing uh, right now is so-called setting a stage.
Well, so in this uh, supersymmetric uh, Young Mills, uh, one have some kind of uh, non uh, renormalization theorem. So, so that some potential functions are analytic. Yes. I guess that was developed by uh, Cyborg and uh, it was used in this <coughs> Cyborg witness theory. <coughs> However, it was first observed but not developed by Schiffman, Weinstein, Novik, and Zakharov in the 1980. Mm. Uh, they, they had this idea. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, it seems to be a homological statement. And moreover, moreover, it seems, and I'll, it will be what I'll try to explain, that uh, it is not quite true because there is a universal anomaly here. Mm. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk right now. Nice. That naively, naively, you have uh, some cohomological statements. However, they happen to be wrong because of the what I would like to say divergences. And these are divergences, special type of divergences that have to be regularized. And uh, it leads to so-called TT star anomaly. Mm. And that's what I'll go to talk right now. Okay. But what's good? That after all, we have our experience in two-dimensional mirror and we can use it. And we can and should use it in four-dimensional mirror problem. Ah, policeman came. Hi, Pasha. Uh, Henry, there's one more minute, so. Ah, let us be precise. Yeah, yeah, so this uh, non uh, renormalization theorem for supersymmetric gauge theory maybe could be understood uh, from in the framework. You see, I, I will show, I will show not only these theorems, but also the place where they are violated. It's interesting. You see, if you have a theorem, you understand it only if you see when it, where it is violated. Okay? And I consider this interesting. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because you know, as we say in Russia, that everything has a limit. So even even non-renormalization theory, theories, theorems have their limit. I mean, limit, limit of uh, applicability, it's interesting. But, uh, so this is the stage. So in order to work in this four-dimensional stage, we need to understand, once again, the two-dimensional story. And by the way, you know, the proof of the pudding is eating. So people were doing mirror for, uh, for 30 years 
and then how to how to check who is understanding mirror two dimensional mirror symmetry properly and who is not let me tell you the criteria only those who are successful in four dimensional mirror are those who actually understood the two dimensional mirror hmm? okay so okay so two dimensional mirror is the first grade so now when you go to the second grade okay you need to keep all all information from the first grade okay Okay, and now all of a sudden, I'll explain what Sam proposed. And Sam said so called non renormalization theorems. Or actually, let me reformulate this non renormalization theorem statement as a statement of decoupling. So this statement of decoupling uh, has several formulations. Supersymmetric formulations. There are D terms F terms and the bar terms. And and the coupling theorem said that naively F terms are cohomology, F bar and D terms are exact. So you can formally manipulate with these integrals and uh, you can see that formally that formally f terms are cohomology of some uh, piece of supersymmetry and the rest are exact okay now It has also, how to say, mm -hmm. yes. So it is also, so it, it also has another formulation of this decoupling. It's called holomorphicity of deformation of complex structure. So, <clears throat> argument. And uh, here, uh, here the main idea is that D bar is holomorphic and the second operator 
because second operator is d bar exact. You see, I put it in these marks because it's uh, a, it's a slogan, and in a second I'll co I'll come to exact statements. Okay. So these are slogans, but uh, in order to, to explain that there is something wrong in these slogans, I would like to go to a particular example, okay? Because you cannot, uh, it's not good to, to kill the slogan by slogan, because it will be just a war of slogans. It will be much more interesting to attack slogan by example, okay? And when you do this, you see what's going on. After you have this experience from the very particular example, you know what does it mean to attack the slogan, okay? But we, but we need to study example. So, example, okay? And this example is I will call it TT star theory or complex Hodge theory. non-compact targets. Okay. So this TT star is of course Chikoti Vapa TT star. But it is here I'm discussing the name. Let me discuss the subject. Okay. So consider Complex manifold. Let me call it X. Consider a holomorphic function. Consider not a holomorphic form, a pair of functions on it and a Keller metric. So it means that I would like consider not a complex but Keller. Okay. So these functions would be called W, it is holomorphic, it would be called superpotential. And W bar, it's called anti holomorphic superpotential. And in order to distinguish them, I'll put here one and two. So you should not necessarily take W bar being complex conjugated to W. W2 is not in general complex conjugated. Okay. Now. Let me consider four operators that I'll call Q, Q1, 
few bars, few dagger, and few bar dagger. So dagger here, her mission conjugation. It actually means take, taking code. Okay, I'll put here one. I'll put here two. I'll put. So I'll see what to put here. So here's the, so this means Hermitian conjugation. Okay, and uh, we will see what to put here. So, as a Q1, I will take D bar plus DW. So these operators are acting on the space of forms. Okay. On X. And here you may ask me, what is the space of differential forms that I'm considering? So I have two options, option alpha and option beta. Option alpha is L2 differential forms. And option two is uh, smooth differential forms. And since I put here these two options, alpha and beta, it would mean that I'll consider both cases. Okay? So let me take Q1, D bar plus DW. Let me take Q2, D plus D bar W bar 2. So here I mean that this being uh, a one form acts by uh, multiplication. So sometimes people put here wedge. I will not put here wedge. I'll just assume that there is a wedge standing in. Okay. Now, what I know is that Q1 and Q2 anti commute. Okay. So how do I know that they anti-commute? It's clear because this, so, we, so, diff, uh, so multiplication by four forms anti-commute, and here I have the bar, and here I already have the bar. Okay. So I will not be in the rush. You may ask. Why I asked here for W to be a function while differential depends only on its derivative? Maybe, and I put here as a subtlety. Would one replace DW, say one, by holomorphic one differential? Okay. You see, when I when so, so also q1 square equals to zero. I forgot to say. So this is holomorphic, this is anti-holomorphic, this is holomorphic, they definitely can do. So answer is yes, but not in all constructions. Interesting, yes. Could I replace it by one form? Yes, but not in all construction. So while I explain something, it would be interesting to ask, to see where can I replace it? Where can I not replace it?
And at the moment, I, I have not uh, used the Keller metric yet. So now, let me let me take the Keller metric. Uh, sorry, Andre, that's uh, probably a silly question, but you are saying that you can take your differential forms to be L two, but are those endomorphisms of L two? So the, 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 you see, I made I made subtle mistake. I'd like to to take maybe not L two, but uh, some subolive space or. Um, So here, there, there should be some conditions on infinity. So what about these conditions on infinity? If the infinity, uh, so of course uh, they should be integrable, but uh, they should go decay fast enough. Not just an not just an infinity, but also conditions on derivatives, right? Because it can be that the thing is in square integrable, but the derivative is not. If if it is far, if it is falling fast enough, then its derivative is also falling fast enough. So okay. So since I'm going to show you the example, let, mm -hmm. let, us, let us put this issue of, uh, of conditions of affinity in general as uh, a, uh, I would put here clarified. You see, I'm saying it in this, in this general way uh, because I remember some conditions in some particular examples. I don't remember the, so I, I thought there, there should just fall fast enough at infinity. And then we may discuss what does it mean to fall fast enough at infinity. Mm -hmm. so, so here we have this Q1 and Q2. And uh, then I, I, should, I want to have this scalar metric. and uh, make two more operators. Well, first, let me take this operator that I will call Q1 transposed. I will not use this Q1 transposed, uh, but uh, it is an intermediate, so it is an intermediate step. So this is the good stuff. Then I will not use only this Q1 transposed. I'd like to use the following object. I would like to take something like a complex conjugation. So I would like to call it. How should I call it? I So since I'm I'm going to make a complex conjugation. I will take W1 to something anti-holomorphic. Okay. And this anti-holomorphic, I'd like to be the following. So uh, the, the so uh, the issue is uh, how should I denote this operator? There are no good notations. Sorry, but isn't it Q one dagger? You see, here is the letter two. Ah. So. So. So, uh, so maybe it's better to call it Q2 
transposed. Okay. Yes. So, so here we have Q1, Q2. Okay, so we will see. Finally, I decided to call them with the letter T. Okay. Transpose. So, okay. So that's what we decided. That's what I decided. How to call it. So this notation is different from notation that you can read in Waffa uh, Chikochi, okay? Because they insist on daggers. And I also wanted to insist on daggers. However, finally I realized that it would not be, that it's not what I want, it's not what I mean. So I decided to use this T, it's not a dagger. Now, now if star is scalar, I would like to say that we have the following commutation relation. That Q1 and Q2 transposed. Huh? Q2 transposed is not Q1 uh, uh, dagger. It's important. Equals to Q2, Q1 transposed, and equals to things that I'll call one to Laplace. Maybe not, okay. Okay, well, let me call it Hamiltonian. And what I'd like to mention is that Q1, Q1 transposed. So uh, what I'd like to say is that all the rest anti commute. Once again, not only my notations here are different from Waffe Chikoti, also my presentation here is different. Because Waffe Chikoti would prefer to say that there is W, W bar, you make an analytical continuation here and there. No, I prefer not to present it this way. You have definitely two functions, or two one forms, W1, W2 bar. And these guys. Okay. I want to say that this H in general is not Ramisha. But it exists in general because it is an algebraic computation. Okay. Okay, now. Why we why we like to study this this quartet? Okay, we would like to study this quartet because we would like to do the following: we would like to see cohomology of Q1, cohomology of Q2. 
basically, yes? And we would like to understand not only cohomology, but we, but we would like to understand dependence. We would like to, to define connection here and study dependence of this connection on, uh, on, on parameters. So we have parameters on W1 and W2, right? So the statement that I go that I'd like to make would be the following. There is a subspace in the space of pairs W1, W2. It's definitely an open subspace. Where? Kernel of H equals to cohomology of Q1. Okay, I will not even say, oh, yes, open, yes, open, yes. So I'd like to put it this way. So the proof. The proof is, uh, so let me give you an argument as kind of a proof. So, uh, So Q1 commutes with H. So Q1 is acting on kernel of H, okay? Second point. For consider spectral decomposition. Okay, not spectral decomposition. Can consider Jordan block. Structure. of H, so then it is clear that Q1 has no cohomology. Uh, Andre, there's a question in the oh. chat. Yes? There's a question. So what's the question in the chat? What is the relation between W1 and W2? At the moment, no relation. At the moment, exactly, you see, I intentionally put here one and two to make statements that are true where W1 and W2 are, are not related at all. And, uh, and take uh, aside statements uh, that are true when, when they are somehow related because uh, these two notions are confused. So people confuse themselves, making wrong annotations. 
okay? Demanding unitarity or homicity. People confuse themselves. At the moment, they are not related at all. So Q1 with H equals to zero. This is true for any W1, W2 bar. So, so H could have a kernel. Of course, Q1 is acting on the kernel, right? Then I say that Q1 has no cohomology for Jordan block in or not in, in, in journal block with eigen number, I, eigen number, not equal to zero. So it means that, uh, e e that if there is a Jordan block with eigen number not equal to zero or in the subspace, where H is invertible, no cohomology, okay? Because it, it uh, acts as homotopy here. So these are general properties. And the same is true for Q2. So, so now, now let me imagine, first I imagine, and then I'll show it. So let me imagine situation where Q1 is not just acting on the kernel of H, but exactly coincides with the kernel of H. And here I will write this word imagine. So I think I can, I need to erase something. Okay, so everybody understands what, what is this tra 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 transpose, what these transpo transposed operators are. Just imagine that Q1 annihilates kernel of H. And the same is true for Q2. At the moment, just imagine. In this case, we will get identification of cohomology of Q1 and cohomology of Q2 through the kernel of H. Okay. Now, in this case, in this case, in this uh, case that we use in our imagination, we may say that if it is true, we may change. Q1 by changing W1 and get a uh, preferred connection. There is a preferred connection in cohomology of Q1 over the space of W1 such that it is 
such that its horizontal sections preferred integrable, sorry, integrable, such that its horizontal sections are constant in cohomology of Q2. And I will call this connection Hodge. I will call it Hodge because it is Hodge theory that makes this um, as an imagination a statement. Okay? We can imagine everything, but we may ask who makes our imagination true? It is Hodge theory. But at the moment, I want to make this purely algebraic statement. So let us see how this can happen. So one of the way for this to happen is the following. Just, so if we imagine this, then what, what would happen when you make a deformation? What could happen with cohomology? Okay, what, what would happen with cohomology of, uh, so, uh, so let, let, let us see. Well, what can happen? Could the uh, cohomology, could kernel disappear if we change W1? No, it cannot disappear because uh, because uh, otherwise we don't understand what, ca what happens with cohomology of Q2. Okay? Hmm? Okay, so at that at that moment, uh, and, and at that moment, I would I, I think I need to make a break number two. So and and there, there is uh, another question in the chat. So if you could uh, check, yes. it. well, uh, could you maybe check your, check yourself rather than <laughs> it would be. Really... Yes, yes. You see, uh, unfortunately, I'd like to see people, and I cannot. <laughs> I was, ah, trying, to, I was I, trying to encourage to, uh, the person to ask the question, but... Yes, yes, point. yes, you are right. You are right, so thank you. So, yes, I am asking... Yes, I am asking, I am answering question. If both W1 and W2 are non-degenerate polynomials, what does the cohomology look like? Of course, cohomology, so if W1 and W2 are non-degenerate polynomials, it means that we, that it is a particular case where we work, where we work on CN. Uh, Otherwise, I don't understand what, what is about polynomials. However, this thing is much more general, okay? So, yes. Yes. So, uh, answer to x x t. So, may I? So, how how should I address to x x t? Because uh, okay. In this word, so dear x x t. You are right. These cohomology are, ac are actually Jacobian W1 and Jacobian W2. Okay? Here, XXT, you are right. And but you but have to be. But the Jacobian uh, of W1 and W2 uh, may be not the same. So why you say oh, that? Of course, of course. But that, okay, since W1 and W2, I never asked them to be the same. Yes. 
So, uh, so first of all, there is a question. Uh, sometimes uh, the Jacobi ring uh, could be could have the same dimension, not the ring structure, but dimension. Mm -hmm. So if if it has the same dimension, there is no contradiction. Okay, mm -hmm. but you may ask what happens if you may ask what happens if W one and W two bar, okay, W two, uh, have a Jacobian ring of different dimension, mm -hmm. and it's a fair question. So uh, if this happens, it would mean if it would mean that. Uh, that our imagination is wrong. It means that what we imagine is wrong. So thank you very much for good question, because your question could, should be uh, decomposed into two questions. First question is uh, the case where uh, probably W1 and W2 bar have Jacobian rings of the same dimensionality, it's one thing. And second, if they are different. So, example of example. If W1 is X to K1, and W2 is X bar to the K2. So if K1 is not equal to K2, it means that our imaginary uh, statement is not, uh, is not valid. It's just not valid. OK? Now. Another case. If K1 equals to K2, however, and I call it K. Consider this. Here I put, here I deform W2. Jacobi ring have the same dimension. However, they uh, are not isomorphic as a ring at all. They are isomorphic only as a vector spaces. Yes. And the only invariant of the vector space is its dimension. That's why I would even put it this way. So I have two set of types, T1 and T2. I specifically use this notation in order to avoid confusion of some complex conjugation. So in this particular example, Jacobian rings have the same dimension. Dimension is k minus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have, but as the rings, they are different. So, I would like to say that I uh, that I picked up this example to sh to show you to argue that in this case, that in this case you still have a perfectly well. So uh, this uh, this imagination is still true in this case. It is true. So you have. You, you can construct from W1, W2 this non Hermitian, non Hermitian, non symmetric operator, okay? Mm -hmm. 
But still, uh, the, this imagination is true. And then the question is how to prove it. But it is true. And let me give you an argument. And the argument is as follows. What you will show after the break, that if T1 and T2 are equal to each other, then you can prove the imagination thing. And then from this point of point of complex conjugation, you can change T, you can start to change T. And you can see that uh, this thing could not, could not ruin because it has no room to be ruined, you see? And, it's, and this is interesting. Okay? Just think about it. Once again, the way how I am explaining this is a bit different from what uh, Waffe and Chikoti, from the way Waffe and Chikoti are explaining. But you may check and uh, look at the arguments. Thank you. So, so actually the proof that this imagination works is the following. First, consider W1, W2 complex conjugated, then move a bit. And when you move, and when you move it a bit, you will see that it still works, you know? Because there is no place where uh, cohomology can go. Because in the open set, in the open set, you still can, you still have cohomology, okay? You can check that there are cohomology, and uh, you need to, for this cohomology to sit somewhere, and they can only sit in the kernel, okay? And this kernel. Uh, has the same dimension as cohomology. So they have to have to coincide. So could I understand that W1 and W2 are two different uh, deformations of uh, uh, a singularity? Yes. Yes, okay, thank exactly. you. Exactly, different, you see. This yes, one and two different are different. Different okay. And uh, if, you, if you study singularity theory, you need to study them uh, proper. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you may ask about higher uh, terms here, higher degrees. And then uh, you can make some kind of an argument considering T being formal. But here, you do not need to consider T to be formal. Mm -hmm. So in the space of T's that you have here, there is some region when you should consider T to be formal. And there is also some region when you can say, no, it's, they're not formal. They could be big. In this case, they could be arbitrary big because this is a symbol of W. It dominates at uh, high values of x. And you can just check. Uh, there is no way where you can put uh, cohomology except but the kernel of uh, h. So the consequence is that kernel of h is still big enough. Okay. Okay, thank you. And by the way, in dimension one, you can even write down uh, uh, what happens with the representative of the kernel of H. However, in dimension where you have not only one X, but several Xs, you can only control uh, the dimension of the kernel. You cannot, cont uh, it, it's a bit hard to, to have explicit computation of, uh, of the kernel, but uh, still it's doable. Okay, so now we need to have a break. 
By the way, may I ask XXT to... Okay, I'll do something politically incorrect because, uh, uh, you know, do things politically incorrect, it's my way to celebrate the inauguration of United States president, okay? He likes doing things politically correct, and I... Uh, so I'm not him, okay? I'm not a president of the United States. So I can ask things that are politically incorrect. So, dear XXT, okay? Uh, may I just ask you to show up for, for a second, or if you don't want to show up, please write your name in the chat. Ah, so I think it is the correct way. Yeah, my name is... Oh, it's Sin Sin Tang, yes? Yeah, yeah. And, and where are you from? Um, Tsinghua University. <laughs> what? Tsinghua University. Mm -hmm. My advisor is Sli, Professor Sli. Ah, okay. And so I, now... uh, I'm working on TD Star Geometry in my PhD period. Ah. So, yeah. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so now I have a five minutes break. Okay. So oh, by the way, I'm here. I just I'm just trying to keep the tradition of a break. That on break people relax.
So this uh, Q1 and uh, Q2 uh, can be uh, constructed for uh, general color management. Yes, and this is very important that this Q1 and Q2 could be constructed for general non-compact Keller manifold. Exactly. It's a point. Replacing, even replacing W1 and W2. Moreover, Hodge connection always exists. So, okay. So, the, so there are two issues. Ah, no, I, Pasha. Maybe Pasha decoupled already. No, yes, uh, yes, what? Oh, how much time do I have in the break? I have no idea. I, I didn't uh, detect. Ah, okay. So uh, I will, so in future, I will use the robot. Right. That's a good idea. All the time. So meanwhile, I say something general uh, in reply to what Sam said. Yes. This Q1 and Q2 could be constructed for, for any Keller manifold. So this setting, moreover here, you can put here the differential form omega one and omega two bar. And still, still, you have this uh, Hodge connection. If the main assumption this imagine is true. Okay. And when I put here omega one and omega two bar, of course, I'm pointing secretly to the so called creature solutions. Okay. And also to ambitwister strings and to many other things. So when Kyoji Saita was doing this, so now I'm saying blah blah blah, you know. So for so when Kyoji Saita was doing his theory, he was thinking only about singularities. However, the actual scope of this construction is of course the as you know mixed hodge theory okay so now somebody should wake up it's a setting of mixed hodge theory and Kruchever made an important, started an important example. In his unknown work of 1992. So Grishiver is known, but his work is unknown. Okay. Okay, so now let me continue. Imagination 
is true. Case 1A. Okay, so I'm continuing. If W2 bar equals to W1 bar. And W grow fast enough. At infinity. You may ask what is infinity? So infinity is non compact. So infinity is non compact direct directions. For Kyoji Saito, it was CL and infinity was a well, model of X was growing to, to infinity. But you may consider the other cases. In particular, consider manifold X to be CP1 minus two points A and B, okay? Then you may take DW to be DX over X minus A, minus dx over x minus b, something like this. So everything, so uh, so everything would, uh, so, so this is an example when uh, w1 does not exist. However, such system exists. Then you may study do we actually, so the question is, do we actually have a discrete spectrum? Can we run as a standard Hodge derivation? So this is the issue. So sometimes we can run it, sometimes we cannot run it. So what can I, so what can I say about this situation? I would say, okay. Maybe what's going on depends on the metric. Maybe standard Hodge depends on the metric. So uh, I never studied this equation in the full generality. So actually, in the case 
in case one a h so q q2 transposed equals to q1 dagger okay So here is T and here is the dagger. Okay, so the and then and then the standard Hodge theory says that uh, so how do we argue that kernel is big enough? We argue in the following way. Let me see. My thing is that we study the norm of the expression. Okay, scalar product, Hermitian product. And we say, so the main, the main thing is that this is omega h omega, okay? So what, what, so from this equality, yes? From this equality, we conclude that if h is zero, then q1 is acting by zero. Okay. So if H is zero here, then since here we have a norm, norm, it could be zero only if Q1 is zero. From H omega equals to zero, it follows that Q1 omega equals to zero. And the same thing for Q2. So we see that we consider this space of H's. Q is annihilating them. So Q is annihilating the kernel. Now we may, we may ask, maybe there are some cohomology outside the kernel, but there are no cohomology outside the kernel, that's it. This is the Hodge argument. So what could be a problem? Taking Q all the way around. It may be in some cases. So what so what else is a problem? Uh, having the norm. So whenever Hodge argument runs, this runs. And look, the place where this is applicable is much wider than uh, Cn and W that, uh, that has polynomial growth. Much wider. Ah, something happened. So do you see me? Because something happened with my computer. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. So this is the Hodge argument. Now, you see, since I said one A, it meant that there will be something like one B, right? Otherwise, I would not call it one A.
Now you have now we have a spectrum. So in the case one A, we have a spectrum that is discrete. What would happen if we change W2, keeping W1 or vice versa? So it is one A. Now what can happen? Here we have uh, here everything x by zero. Here there are no cohomology. There is no possibility for the kernel to lift because would kernel be lifted? Uh, we are losing uh, cohomology, so kernel is still here. So. So what can happen? This excited uh, level could go down, and at some moment it could touch the ground level, and then something could happen. But it is a finite distance. Finite distance. in T and T bar until the first excited level would uh, come to the ground level. That's why there is uh, an open set. From here we see that there is an open set. Until something happens. And even if something happens, we need to study what happens. So I have not studied what happened, but something may happen. Good problem. See how things break down. Now at finite distance in T, such thing could happen. Moreover, this finite distance becomes infinite in the case that uh, that I took as an example of an example. Okay. Now I have defined Hodge connection. in cohomology, say, of Q1 over W1. Note that this Hodge connection, it depends on W2 bar. So this is so-called So it's phenomena. It's called TT star anomaly or holomorphic anomaly or whatever. Why people call it anomaly? Because uh, people think that since, since Q1, depends on, on W1, and we have this problem of the formation of Q1. How could it be that there may be a solution that depends on W2? Hmm? The, the answer is that there is a solution that depends on W2. And we cannot forget W2 bar, of course, when we study. We would like to be a bit more specific. So in order to be a bit more specific, it is very 
important to study so-called Gauss Martin connection. So what is Gauss Martin connection? Once again, in order to understand Gauss Martin connection, it is good to put spectral parameter here, Z, D plus D bar W bar. So consider Q of Z. So Q of Z is Q1 plus Z Q2. So it's very natural if you have a double complex to make this, how to say, bundle, pencil. Okay, people call it pencil. So what is interesting in this pencil? It's what interesting is that when we change W, is Q2, exactly. What does this mean? It means that we have a connection given by a horizontal section. E to what? Horizontal section of Gauss Mannin connection. So, so let, let us see. What's going on? Let us apply here this differential. Okay, delta QZ is D by plus D bar W bar commutator delta omega. Okay, so this is delta Q Z. So we see that this delta Q Z is Q Z exact. is one over Z QZ applied to Delta W. That's why I have this connection. So you see, you change the differential QZ and you see that it is exact. Ah, it's a good place 
So it's a good way to make a connection. You can write it this way. And similarly, delta QZ is D bar plus D W applied to delta W bar. Okay, one and two. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, it's just simple algebraic manipulation. I observe that this is this term is exact and this term is exact. So all together I have this marvelous gauss Martin connection. It's that simple. So Kyojasaita studied only restriction to the W1 deformation. Why is the Z in the second formula? Oh. And they, why is the Z factor in the lowest formula? Lowest formula? Uh, no, lo lowest formula for delta QZ. On the right. Here? Yeah. I saw that it's here. Why? So delta QZ, yeah. uh, the delta QZ, ah, because here is Z. Ah. Mm -hmm. No, you see, they, they, they look, uh, you see, they enter uh, in the pretty symmetrical way. So that's why it's not a surprise that they enter this way. So this is gauss mannheim connection. Now, what is interesting? It is important to compare Hodge connection with gauss mannheim connection. And when we compare Hodge connection, so Now, what can, by the way, here we need to, here one remark is important, that Gauss-Mann, that for Gauss-Mann connection, W, that for Gauss-Mann connection, omega one has to be exact, all right? Or put it, put it differently. Gauss-Mann connection happens only if you deform the one form by something exact. So for Hodge connections is not needed, for Gauss-Mannin connection it is needed, okay? Now the question is compare Hodge and gauss money connection. So when we, when we uh, have Hodge connection, what do we do? No, 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 let us write what happened with the representative. So in order to compare Hodge and Gauss-Mannin connection, 
it is good to compare what happens with the representatives of the cohomology. So for Gauss model in W1 direction, representative goes into this, right? Or Hodge in W one direction. What should we say about representative? Well, here is delta representative. Variation of, rep of representative is what? We just need to say that it is. Q2 exact. So how to get Q2 exact something? We take delta W1 multiplied by omega. Okay. Okay, so la, 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 let me try to. So we need to look for the, the Q2 exact something. So we need to solve the equation Q1 plus Q2 delta omega 1 apply to omega plus delta omega should be zero first, and second, delta omega should be. Q2 exact. So this is re rewriting uh, the, the Hodge connection as a formula. Once again, the Hodge connection is already exactly determined in words, but we need to write down a formula. Okay? So formula is a bit tricky because we need to say that Q1 of delta omega should be equal to Q2 delta omega one applied to omega. We need to solve this equation. So Q2 here x by zero. So that's why we are looking for this. So how to solve this equation? How to write down delta omega such that q1 on it equals to q2 on this guy? Together with this equation. And here, let me show you the solution. So delta omega one times omega look it could be decomposed as a what as a representative of this class in kernel of H, okay? Mm, sorry, what I'm saying. So you take the Q1 cohomology class. of this. Then you could do the following. So this Q1 cohomology class, you may take the representative of it. Uh, so this one, I'm sorry, plus Q1 exactly. 
something. Oh, sorry, you see, I think uh, I'm saying something wrong. I'm sorry. So once again, I want to solve this equation. Once again, I'm sorry. I uh, said something wrong. We want to solve this equation. So consider case, case A, delta omega one times omega is zero in Q1 cohomology. So it may happen that because Q1 applied to delta W1 omega is zero. So this object could be zero in Q1 cohomology. Then in this particular case, in the case A, I would say, let me take a pre-image. So if it's zero, I can take a pre-image and uh, and I would say that delta omega would be Q2 one over Q delta omega one omega. So here it will be any pre-image. But in general, I cannot do it because this delta omega one omega may be non-zero in Q1 cohomology. So I consider the case where delta omega one omega is non-zero. So what should I do? I will do the following. I will re rewrite delta omega one omega as So first I take its class in Q1 cohomology and then I consider sigma of this. So sigma is the element from kernel of H representing this class. Okay. Plus Q one of something, and I pull and I call this somehow. I call it R. It means the rest. Then, if I Then I am continuing solving the equation. It's Q2 applied to what? To sigma delta omega one omega Q1 cohomology. Plus what? Plus Q2 applied to Q1 of the rest, right? I just plug it here. Now I know how to solve. Q2 applied to the image of sigma, this is zero. So this is zero because the element of kernel of H representing this class 
is of course Q2, Q2 closed. So delta omega is, now I can take Q1, is Q2 applies to R, and this is an answer. I solved the equation. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so from the computation, um, could we see something like descendants in this computation? Yes. Uh, and we see descendants, of course, when we study Gauss-Mannin connection. The Z are nothing but descendants. I'll come to the sentence later on, but but when we study cohomology of this pencil of connections, this cohomology depends on Z, on the pencil parameter. So yes. if you localize, if you localize at Z zero, so you consider formal power series in Z, mm -hmm. you will see the sentence, of course. But at the moment, at the moment, I want to say that I found the solution. I just need to uh, write down uh, this. So delta omega is Q2 times R. I just need to extract R out of it. So I take this to the left. So I have the final result so that. So here is Q1 of R and delta omega is Q2 of R. So delta omega is what? Is Q2 applied to one of Q1 and here I have delta omega one, delta w one omega minus this complicated thing. Sigma of delta omega one, omega q one. So this is delta Hodge and delta Gauss money is just this. Now we can compare Hodge and Gauss money. And we will see that in Q of Z cohomology, Q2 one over Q1 is equivalent to take one over Z. Basically, basically because QZ is Q1 plus ZQ2. So Delta Hodge in QZ cohomology is this. Now we are comparing two integrable connections. This is gauss Manning, and here we have this term. And this is nothing but the site modification. So QOG Saita explains this term in the following way. This sigma that I call here, QOG Saita called the section. So we need to multiply, take 
image in Q1 cohomology and lift into QZ cohomology. So, totally, we have two connections in QZ cohomology, Hodge and gauss manning And uh, comparing them, we see this difference. Now, let omega A be a basis in Q1 cohomology. Let ah okay. Then multiplication by delta omega one acts on Q one cohomology by. A linear operator C delta omega one C A B delta omega one Then here omega a is an, is a basis. Now let us take a special basis. That is uh, parallel due to Hodge connection. Then this formula could be written in the following way that uh, connection that is Gauss Manin, that is or Hodge, okay, is uh, Gauss Manin connection. Plus this. Or you may even write it without basis. You can, or you, you can always, you can also uh, write it in this way without basis. Hodge connection equals to Gauss Manning plus one over this, and this is called T part of KD star. Similarly, you can get, you can work out T bar, T bar part of T T star, and. Uh, Study commutator. In particular, Gauss Manin is flat. Gauss Manin is a sum of the Hodge. So Gauss Manin is Hodge plus one over C C delta omega one plus Z. C bar delta omega two bar. Then flatness of Gauss Manning connection implies T T star. So this is a derivation of T T star equation. In a way that we can see Q G theta connections there. Let me say one thing. I don't have time to go into this detail, but 
as a statement. Having TT star together with non degeneracy -de of action of delta W1 on cohomology of Q1. We can get special coordinates on the base of the formation of delta omega one. given by the simple formula we apply to generating element constant generating element and this is one form and we call it dt and this is a formula for special coordinates that I already discussed once in the context of formal solutions. But here I just derived it. What is important here is that this choice of special coordinates Special coordinates depend on W two bar. And this is the phenomena of holomorphic anomaly. So doing all this construction all the way down. We found special coordinates and we need special coordinates to make a mirror. However, tricky thing, the choice of them depends on W2 bar. And then when we make a mirror, two dimensional mirror at the moment, we need to check is these special coordinates that we actually need because for any w bar w to bar you get a solutions to w dvv equation but you need to check that you get a proper solution and when you change w bar w to bar you you might get a new solution of uh, w dvv that is not the mirror solution so the thing one has to do is to change, is to check the proper W2 bar. So conjecture is that proper W2 bar is complex conjugated to W1 in some examples. But this has to be checked. Okay. Let me make another remark. Another remark means that remember I introduced omega one that was D W one. The periods of omega one are parameters of the WDV solution. 
But that are not the, they are not the base of deformation. So when I'm start when I'll study some particular examples, I'll see that these are solutions over the moduli of W1 with parameters being the periods. And uh, this is uh, inside the Krishivar's uh, solution that I don't have to time about right now. So let, let me summarize. I'm sorry, uh, you see, I think I want to push too much information into you. Yes, Pasha? Uh, for me, definitely. So, uh, summarize. Yes? I'll ask a question after you summarize everything. Yes, so, so summarizing. There is a very general setup. In, and in this very general setup, you have theory, you have two differentials. You have theory of the deformation of the complex, of the pencil. And in this theory of deformation of the pencil, there are two connections. One connection is the Hodge connection. That could be uniquely characterized by the property that deformation in uh, Q1 cohomology is Q2 exact, and deformation in Q2 cohomology is Q1 exact. It's its characterization. The existence of such connection depends on the property of the system. But in many cases, such system exists. And there is the second connection called gauss madden connection. That always has a flat section. Always integral. The peculiarity of gauss madden is that uh, Is that uh, is that uh, we need to, to have it? We need superpotential, uh, not uh, just derivative of superpotential. So having these two two set of data, we can write down explicitly Gauss-Marin connection, Hodge connection, and compare them. The result of the comparison is the flat connection with spectral parameter. From this flat connection with spectral parameter, you can get special coordinates on the base of deformation. And it's exactly the missing piece in the mirror correspondence. So this is a summary. And we need to understand this uh, before we even try to go to four-dimensional mirror. We need to understand that we need uh, these uh, special coordinates and uh, that in two-dimensional case, that's how we got them. So now, Dong, I think, yes, you, you want to ask something. Uh, it, it, the first question is just about the terminology. When you say special coordinate, it, I understand it as a flat coordinate. In this yes. case, flat is with respect to Delta Hodge or Nabula Gaussman. Okay, uh, you see, the, the, the word flat is misleading here because uh -huh. I haven't considered the metric yet. So that, that's why it's, you see, here I explained everything without using words metric. Yeah, so still, you, can side, say, you can say that it is flat with, with respect to certain connection. So, so you decide to put another data on it, mm -hmm. namely metric such that this metric is flat with respect to this, I would say, Hodge connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's possible to compute it, to define it, and then there will be additional structure. And this metric would be parallel. And that's why these coordinates would be called, or were called by QGSI to flat. 
But in the construction that I described, I do not need any metric, yes, any yes, flag. Yes. So I prefer to call it special. So when we would like to study something like generalized mirror, we would definitely need uh, uh, special coordinates that correspond to generating parameters of uh, type A observables. So <laughs> to call them flat, so it's not clear that we will have a metric in generalized case. Yeah, I see. So we don't have a metric. So yeah. So so it's on, so it's bad wording to call it flat. But these are special coordinates that uh, that in the case of singularities are flat coordinates of Georgi site. Okay. So uh, and the second question would be. So, so we have uh, some sort of freedom of choice of W2, right? If it satisfies certain conditions. So exactly. I, saw, mm, I saw two versions when W2 is W1 bar and the other one is W2 is zero. And I also oh, remember- it, it is In this case, you have no, if W2 is W2 is zero, Yes. Uh, you don't have Hodge condition. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, if, but if I consider this zero as a limit of lambda. But if you lambda. consider, but yes. But if you consider this zero as a limit, it will be exactly what uh, what you will have. And I However, remember that you suggested that for this coordinate, we, we should start with uh, some tropical things on the mirror for yes, uh, yes. for Ivafa case. And do you have any idea what would be W two in that case? And, and uh, so here, so this is an open question for me. I so see. yes, uh, yes, uh, oh yes, of course. So there are two candidates, and it will be very interesting to check if they are the same. Because the integrable system uh, is a system on C star, okay, on, on C star to the power L. And uh, so it was not the case that you decided to study. But still, uh, it, it is a fair system. And it would be very interesting to see if uh, if actually W would be W bar. But uh, but, uh, but uh, this has to be checked, and uh, a priori there is no uh, reason to say that it will be like this. Oh, I see. Okay. Because uh, because these two good sections have two very different origins. Right. Yes. Yes. And it is very interesting to compare these two. So you see, in order to go towards dimension four, we need to clarify many things in dimension two. Of course, many action helps to, uh, to identify the change of ground state. Sorry, say it again, please. Your of this connection, you kind of identify uh, said I don't hear you. 
Sen, most probably you need to do something with your router. Pasha, do you hear me? Yes. So connection between Moscow and maybe it's a connection. So, Sen, I don't hear you. So either it's a problem between Moscow and China or uh, it's a problem in uh, Sen's router. Okay, so let, let us check. Ah. So let me ask people, first let me ask people from the East. Do you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Ah, Sam, no, no, now you are in. Yes, yes, I. Uh, the whole connection is like of a state. Yes, yes, Hodge yeah. connections, yes. It's, uh, it's like a connection on the ground state. However, uh, it's a connection on the ground state in the non uh, uh, Hermitian theory. Yes. So, so to um, uh, yes. Corresponding connection is like change of yeah holomorphic forms. Okay, Gauss mining in Gauss mining connection, we we play with the spectral parameters. In Gauss mining connection, we are allowed to divide by z and to multiply by z because we have a pencil. Mm. In the in, in the Hodge connection. We are not touching Z. Yeah. Uh, and that's why they are different. Yes. By the way, in their original derivation, Waffe and Chukoti somehow managed to, to get explanation without using uh, Gauss Martin connection, and it's a bit surprising. And later, I thought it was uh, Dubrovin who put uh, TT star as an equation with spectral parameter because uh, uh, Waffa and Chakoti did not have spectral parameter in TT, in TT bar. This spectral parameter was absolutely obvious, but Waffa and Chakoti have not put, put them this spectral parameter because it did not uh, fit into their explanation of what is going on. So QOG site, of course, had it because it was QOG site who invented it. So uh, Dubrovin explained the uh, appearance of spectral parameter on TT star, but he did not explain the origin. I somehow put everything together. Hmm. And once again, it would be very interesting to find four dimensional analog of all this. Because in dimension four, at least I would expect two spectral parameters corresponding to Nikrasov's epsilon one and epsilon two. So are, are they complex? Uh, this epsilon one and epsilon two can be considered as a complex parameters or oh. uh, 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 they are former parameters oh. formal and uh, if we consider one the two-dimensional analog of Nikrasov theory then uh, it is z this z
So the reason why Nikrasov is not doing this uh, is because, so my, so you see, I need to explain why Nikrasov is not doing these things. It's because uh, for him, uh, Mm. Super potential, prepotential look differently. I, I don't know how to explain. I'm sorry. So, so the and so the things are obvious. You should study n equals two, d equals four. Uh, gauge theory in particular, gauge theory, and find the corresponding structures there. And uh, get a theory with superpotential. With prepotential, th 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 that should play the role of superpotential. Actually, we started to move in this direction, but uh, we stopped in 96 or 97. Okay, so I think that it's enough for today. So, and Andre, there is another question in the chat. Yeah, oh, ah, sorry. Ah, thank you. One second. The realization of TT star A ah, geometry st structure here. Okay, so okay, I need to. Ah, I see. How to understand it in 2D? Uh, uh, the answer is, is that we have supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So you, you may say it on the space of loops. And uh, and uh, actually, when we study 2D, we study uh, the loop in the target space. And uh, in some case, uh, we can replace the loop by its center of mass, and then we have one dimensional theory. In some other case, the loop can wrap something. So that's why in two dimensional theory, we can have several things that look very different from the one dimensional theory perspective. But in any case, it's of course supersymmetric theory and the space of loops. In what we call B model, in what we call B model, it is kind of a center mass of loops, of the loop. And uh, in what we call A model, we have wrapping. So loop can wrap something. And we need this wrapping, otherwise we will not get instantons. And the full mirror system is just comparing these two things. Uh, so in the mirror transformation that I was trying to explain, the wrapping of the loop may be considered as momenta in the extra dimension. And that's how mirror happened.
But of course, I'm not. You see, I would like to give an explanation for to to D in such a way that it will be slightly parallel to 4D. However, the case of 4D is not done yet. It's kind of a project. But at the same time, the story with 1D is uh, a perfectly fair story. You may consider it as a complex Hodge theory uh, on its own and uh, try to relate it to the mixed Hodge theory business. Because here, uh, well, I, I, I want to make last remark. Here, here W is a very particular deformation of the complex structure. Very particular. In general, you need to consider Beltrami differentials and other stuff. And interplay between them. And to get a mixed hot structure there. So uh, unfortunately, this, this was not done yet. And it's kind of, and it's a pity. So I remember there were papers of Italian mathematicians trying to relate 1D story with the mixed Hodge structure. However, uh, I don't think that they are complete. This has to be done, not forgetting to cite them properly. So plan on mixed Hodge structure would be, first, establish that this is related to mixed Hodge structures. First, then read again the old Italian papers and give them the proper credit. And third, finally explain what is the mixed hot structure from the point of view of uh, supersymmetric uh, quantum mechanics. Well, that's it. So mathematicians would say, would tell you thank you for for this. Mixed hot structures are at the corner. And the simplest example is Critchever theory. Who considered who considers Riemann surface with punctures, and it's exactly the case where we have this mixed Hodge structures. Okay, I think that's it for, for, for today. And I'll continue tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I'll Thank learn a lot. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.